Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad. This is Minister Joanne Harris. This is Word Faith Ministry. Glory be to God. We know that this is a blessed day. We just want to thank God for a brand new day, a brand new day to come before him with the word of God today and let him have his way. Glory be to God. So we always want to start off by going before the throne of grace. So let's go into prayer and then we allow the Holy Spirit. We're going to allow him right now to have his way. Glory be to God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for a brand new day. Thank you, Lord God, that you took care of us, God. You watched over us, Father God, and you didn't let any danger come to us because you the one that said in your word that you will keep us, God, under your wings of protection, that no evil will come near us. Father, we thank you for your keeping power. We thank you, Lord God, that you touched us this morning and you command our body to rise and you breathe life within us another day. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that follow us. Father, as we go into your word today, we go listen to hear what you got to say to us. And as we hear, Lord God, let us apply and be obedient to your word, God. Father, we stand today before you giving praise and thank you for this word going forth that, Lord God, none of me but all of you, Father God. We bind every distraction from the enemy right now, Lord God. There's no distraction, nothing coming against where you going for, God. Nothing but your power flowing, God, like never before. Father God, we thank you right now that we continue to stand on your word because your word said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, judging us, Father God, in any way against your will. Father, we speak right now that those tongues be condemned in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy that keeps us, keeps us each and every day. Lord God, none of me, but all of you, Lord God. Touch my lips, God, from the coal of your altar. Father God, check Every vocabulary word. But Father God, we know that you are excellent. And every word that comes out of your mouth are excellent. Father, we thank you right now, God, that we will hear what you have to say to us. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. For you love us so much more. And we thank you, Lord. We love you. And thank you for loving us first, Lord God, because you gave your son, Jesus Christ, that we can have this life, that we have it more abundantly. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks for this blessed day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Glory be to God. Thank God for that. And we just got to always give praise unto the Lord because it's his goodness that keeps us. Glory be to God. He keeps us. He preserves us because he says it in his word that he will keep you and he will preserve us from all evil. So today, top of today, the Lord bringing to us, you know, to pray and ask God, always pray. But we talking today about deliver us from evil. Come on. Evil could be deliver us from ourselves, our wrongdoing, or what we may be falling short of, the glory of God. But it said deliver us from evil. Glory be to God. Because who is the evil one? It's, it's Satan. And he comes to tempt. Come on. Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Let's let's go to uh, Matthew 6. And we're going to start right here. As I always have your pencils and your paper that we can, you can always go back on these scriptures. And you can go back and allow the Holy Spirit to, to minister to you about these scriptures. So we're going to go to Matthew 6. And let's go. It's part of the prayer. These are part of the part of the model prayer that God, uh, that Jesus taught his disciples. But we're going back over there because the Holy Spirit said today, pray, it deliver you from evil. So our topic today, deliver us 
from evil because it's evil out there and it's mean it's a devil out there and he's seeking and who he can defy he are the evil he calls in the evil come on glory be to god and it said in the 13th verse of matthew 6 says this it says and lead us not come on come on lead us not into temptation who does the temptation satan it comes from satan he the one that does the tempting because why because he tempted jesus come on in the when he was going in the garden he tempted him he tried but always jesus came with a word like we must do stay in the word of god and always have something to, to in your hand and that's the word of god use your sword to go back at the tempter when he say one thing and try to tempt you to do another thing glory be to god it lead us not into temptation but deliver us god but deliver us from evil this is what we should always pray lord deliver when you see the enemy trying to tempt you you got to go and say lord lead me not don't let me follow Come on, that's what it means. Don't allow you to follow the enemy. Don't allow me to fall to his his uh attack. Come on. Or his tricks. Come on. Or his deceit. Because he's trying to deceive you. Come on. That's what it, that's what it means. Lead us not into no temptation. Lord, continue to guide me on the righteous path. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Keep me on that righteous path. Keep my eyes stayed on you. Then I won't be what? Tempted toward what the enemy is out there doing. He is the evil one. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us from who? Satan. Pray these prayers. We should see that when we see temptation coming from the enemy, don't yield to it. But remember this. Lord, deliver me from evil. Because I see evil trying to come around me, trying to tempt me to get out of your will. And I'm trying to stay living for you. Come on. Satan ain't going to, he's not going to stop. Trying to tempt you to get you away from God or trusting in the Lord. He's not going to stop. He's going to continue to do what he his part to do, and that's evil. And as we put our trust in God, we're going to stay in his righteous path. And we'll be led and followed by him. And he will what? Preserve us. We're going to get into that. And it says what? For thine is thy kingdom, the power, and the glory. Come on, forever. God is here with you forever. His power is always there, keeping you, preserving you. Jesus is always there. Watch him. When you call upon the name of the Lord, he's there all the time. He said, I give my angels charge to keep you. Come on. He's always there. So this is what we got to trust in and what his words say. When the enemy come and try to tempt you, remember the prophet. Remember what he, he Jesus taught. As he teaching us as well today. Glory be to God. Deliver us from evil. Because there's evil, wicked things going on. But we as true believers in Christ Jesus we got to stay on that path knowing that the temptation going to come hallelujah knowing that it's the tempter going to try to tempt us away from god he trying to get many kids see he already know he he been defeated but he tried to get us distracted to feel like it, it, he had not been defeated but when we believe that he been defeated two thousand years ago through jesus christ going to the cross our power is in his hand. He took the power. Satan does not have no power. That's why he's a tempter, because he get he tempt you and you give him the power to do whatever he wants to do in your life. 
Glory be to God. So this is why God said, what? Well, Jesus teaching this, but to what? Deliver us from evil. Come on. For thine is the kingdom of God is there. The kingdom of God is there for you at all times. Watching over because God gave his angel to He's there as you keep your trust in him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's go right quick to um first Corinthians and let's go to the tenth tenth um chapter and then the thirteenth verse. We still talking about deliver us from him, even in the temptation. Come on. Deliver us because Satan is the tempter. And we know deliver us from who the evil one is. He the one do the tempting. He the one does the tempting. So let's go there. <clears throat> and it says this. There has not, there has no temptation, come on, taken to you, but search as is common to man. That means your common carnal mind. That you see the temptation, the carnal mind see what being coming against them, trying to tempt them to away from God. You can see it. Come on. But it said, there has no temptation taken you. Come on. But search as is common to man. But God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is what? He's faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above, come on, that you are able, come on, to happen. If you cry out to God when you see the enemy trying to pull you back into that sin, back to what you used to do, and you don't want to do that, you want to live for God, call upon the name of the Lord. He sees that. He sees the tempter. He, Jesus been through it. So he know how, how it feels. But you can call on him. But God said that there is no what, what he said. But God is so faithful that who will not suffer you, come on, to be tempted above, come on, that you are able. That's me, or you are able to have. God is not going to allow Satan to tempt you. I mean above to put things on you that you can't handle. If he come to tempt you, God already know that if you're going to call on the name of Jesus, you're going to see the tempting of the devil, what he's trying to do. You're going to see the evil one. Glory be to God. He said, but will, will the temptation also make a way of, of an escape? He'll give you a way out of there. If you call upon his name, if you, Lord, help me, don't allow me to go back into that scene. Help me, Lord. See what I'm saying? So God's going to give you a way of escape from that. No matter what that tempting, that the devil's trying to tempt you with. God's going to give you a way. Now it's up to you. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's continue. He'll give you a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Come on. That he will what? Give, help you to be able to bear it. Now, he's not going to put nothing on no more on you that you can't not handle. But God know you trust him. But it's up to us. We're going to, James going to tell you. Now, it's still up to you. God give us a choice. Now, I give you a way out of it. But if you're being lured by your own love, that's something. See, we can be our own enemy. So we can need, sometimes we need to ask God to deliver us from us. Come on. We're going to go over here to James, and James is going to tell us. Let's go to James. And he's going to tell you how, you know, that God don't tempt. Come on. Let's go to John, I mean James. Let's go to James 1, and let's start at 13. It says, James 1 and 13 say, Let no man say when he is tempted. Come on. 
I am tempted of God. Because, see, God don't tempt. Satan tempt. Come on. Deliver us from the evil. Look, come on, lead us not into temptation, God. So this is what you got to say, Lord, lead me not. Remember those prayers. When the enemy is coming trying to tempt you. Lead us not, Lord God, into this temptation. Lord, deliver me right now out of this. And that we, over there in First Corinthians, he said what? He'll give you a way of escape. He will not allow that thing to overtake you. But the, James telling us, let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. We got to stop saying that God allowed. God don't allow no temptation to come to you. God is not evil. He said, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Come on. How we would say that God did this evil. God don't do evil. The word just said. He said, don't say you being tempted. See, when the evil come in my life, this temptation come. Come on. God said, I'm going to give you, I'm there for you to give you a way out of this. If you what? Trust in me. If you come before me with this. Lord, I, I see the enemy. Try, what he's trying to do. But Lord, you give me the strength to overcome. And when God hear you say says that, then he's going to jump in. He's going to be there and, and, and to help you in every way. Because he said, I'll give you a way of escape. He'll give you a way. He will not allow that thing to overcome you. If you keep your trust, the main thing you got to what? Keep your trust and not blame God for what's going on in your life. Come on. A lot of time we want God did doing that to that person. Look at that. No. This word in James is going to tell you what's going on. Let's go on. It says, For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. Come on. We got to stop saying, Well, God allowed. Come on. If it's evil, that ain't God. Now, God will help you. Through these things, he already said, I'll give you away. Because I'm not going to let that, whatever the enemy trying to tempt you with, with and trying to put on you, I'm not going to allow you to go through that more than you can bear. Some of this stuff is what man, like I said, what man have done. Come on. For common, what such as common to man. A lot of this stuff, the devil got to use somebody to do his tempting. Come on. The much is common to man. But God is so faithful. The word says he is faithful to what? To give you a way out of it. You don't have to say being tempted by man, being what? Persecuted, continue to let people do it and say, God allowed me to be this here. Oh, if it comes, if the tempter come, I can cry out to God, Lord, help me overcome this and get move on and get out of this. Not stay there and allow the devil to keep poking you with the same stuff. Let's go back over here. Let's finish James. Because it's just telling us God cannot be tempted with evil. Come on. Neither tempt he it any man. But every man, 14 say, every man is tempted, come on, when he is driven away from his own, by his what? Own lust. Come on. When he's driven away of his own lust. Deliver me from evil. Sometimes you, you ask God, deliver me from me. Because there are some thoughts, or wrong thoughts. There are some the evil come, the devil come to you with thoughts, and they are wrong thoughts. Come on, deliver me from me. 
of my ways of not obeying God, of my ways of being following the wrong way. Come on. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Come on, deliver us. We see the tempting. You got to recognize what the enemy is doing. Or if he's doing it to you, doing it to your own self. Because you are driven by your own love. Come on. And enticed. You are being enticed. If that thing enticing you, you are being enticed to do it, then you need to ask God to deliver you from you. This thing from me. If it's a lust, whatever you lust enough, money or whatever it may be, ask God to deliver you. Glory be to God. Let's, let's go on. It says, then when lust has in conceived, it is being what? For is bringing forth sin and sin. And when it is finished, bring it forth death. For the, for the wages of sin is death. Come on. For the wages of sin is death. Come on. Now this is what Paul was talking about in Romans 6. Should we continue in sin? God forbid you to continue to do this. But this is telling you, well, okay, if the tempting, lead me not into temptation. Lord, help me the not to follow. That's what it means. Help me to keep my eyes on you. When you pray and never lead me not into no temptation. That means don't don't allow me, help me to recognize and don't allow me to be lured by the lust of my flesh or desire of being enticed. By what the enemy trying to entice me, me with. He trying to entice you to do what the world do it. Do it the way the world. Everybody else doing it. It's They going to church and they doing it. They pray. You have to be careful. It's not about you going to church. It's about that how you trust in the Lord for your life. Your everyday life. That you're walking in his righteousness. That you're being obedient. That you are not what? Enticed by the tempter. Who is what? Satan. And God is so faithful that he will deliver us. When we pray that prayer from evil. Deliver me. I don't care what you're in. If you have a drug addiction, you cannot get, get off of that. You can ask God to deliver me, God, from this evil. Whatever it may be that is against God's word, against what he his commandment that he wants us to obey, and that's to live a righteous life. And when God recognizes you constantly praying to God, then he shows you where the, t- the devil is tempting you at and to try to entice you. Come on. If Satan trying to entice you away from this, away from God's word, then you got to recognize the tempter and realize, hallelujah, that God is faithful. Come on, deliver you out of there. And never say, God allow. God don't allow evil. Because the evil one is saved. So when evil comes, we got a prayer, a word to stand on and say what God said and remember what he said he would do. He's faithful to his word. He said God is faithful. But he's faithful, but it's up to us to not to be what? Enticed by what the tempter is trying to tempt us in. Away from believing what God's word says about you. Come on. Let's let's go to um 
Psalms 1, oh, I mean Psalms 20, 21. Let's go there. Because God is, is, is faithful. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to what he say he will do, and he will do it. Come on. He will do just what he say. The word say he's faithful. Come on. To give you a way of escape. That means he's faithful to do when you believe and trust in him. He will deliver you. Because you, you he'll show you a way out. Glory be to God. Then this is what we got to keep the faith. On this. Psalms 121. Come on. And we're going to start with the seventh verse. He said what? The Lord shall preserve thee. From all evil. Come on. What do you say? He'll preserve you. That means he'll keep you from the evil. That's why you pray, Lord, deliver me from evil. Let me keep me from this evil. Keep me from the evil one, the devil. He said, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Not just some. He said he won't allow the devil to tempt you above that you can handle. Come on. Not what common man that what man feel like. Oh, we say a lot of things, but we never say what God say. We never trust what God's words say. We say it's a lot of things, but we never trust in what God's words say. And this word said what? He will preserve you from, from all evil. And he will preserve your soul. Come on. He's not going to allow. But if you're enticed, like James said, by your own love, uh, you allow the, the tempter to entice you over that way. Then what? Sins come. And the wages of sin is death. If you, he'll call you to continue in that because he'll continue to tempt you, to entice you into that and make you think that it's all right. No matter what it is. We know what sin is. We don't have to name it out. You know. Because if you didn't know what sin was, you wouldn't try to hide it. You wouldn't be a, you wouldn't try to not love no one to see you in that sin. Because you'll do it what? And that's what he say them do. You'll do it. Some people open with it because they really don't know God. And that they really mean that they don't believe there is a God. Well, we just openly do it because we don't care. We don't fear God. When you openly do it, you don't fear God. You saying in your heart, there is no God. Glory be to God. Let's go on to this. And he says what? And the eighth said, the Lord shall preserve your going out, come on, and your coming in from this time forth. That means right now and even forevermore. He will be there for you. He will lead you and he will guide you. Come on. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If you trust him. He just said he'll preserve you from all evil. Come on. He will preserve your going out and your coming in. Psalm 23, 4 say, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That means whatever danger or tempting that the day devil has got around you, come on. I will fear no evil. Don't fear the evil. No matter what you're going through. Come on. In your life. Whatever you're going through, it was in the valley. Go on through the valley with Jesus. You don't have to fear. Because God is with us. He is with you. He said it. I preserve it. It said that he will be faithful. First Corinthians say he is faithful. That means he's faithful to what he said in his word. Stand on his word because his word is his voice. And he said he will be faithful to not allow Satan to tempt you above you can handle. 
when you got your trust in the Lord. Only put your trust in him. And he will what? Preserve your going out and your coming in. Come on. He will preserve you from all evil. This is the word. And this is what we got to start to show ourselves approval unto God. When we're showing ourselves approval unto God, that means we'll remember what his word and say what his word say. Say to no word matters. He knows word because the word of God says death and life is in the power of your tongue. He knows it was word spoken this world into existence. The heaven and the earth was spoken by God by word. And Satan know that. And if he come to steal this word, if you don't have nothing and you are coming to what you think in your carnal mind. You'll feel like, oh, that ain't no, that ain't the devil. That's them people. No, the devil got to use somebody. They are being what? Influenced by the temple to do what? Evil. To do evil. Come on. We know it's all come from Satan. Anything you see someone doing evil, doing you wrong, is because they are being enticed by the devil to do that certain thing. Because they does not understand the righteousness of God and the ways of God. But when you remember what God were, no, no weapon form against me shall prosper. And God's word, those are the words he gives to us as the righteousness of him who are what? He give us that word as, a, as an inheritor to save. What tell Peter, on this rock, I be on my church. If you the true church, he said the gates of hell should not prevail against you. When you stand firm on and rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. And you know that you know what God's word say when the tempter come. When the evil one come to try to do evil. Remember what he said. He's so faithful to me. I'm faithful that, that my word is going to perform in your life. And he cannot, the evil one cannot do nothing to you. And I will not allow him to take you so far that you'll lead you away from me. But James told us what? Is according to where we are being what? Enticed by our own love. Don't be enticed to follow. Don't be enticed to follow. But let's continue in the 23rd Psalm. It says what? <clears throat> it says, yes, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you got to know what? For thou art with me. You got to know he with you. God, you you always give a new way. When the enemy doing what he doing, I I know you got me a way. You got a way that Satan don't know. You going to fix it. You always have and you always will. You will never leave me. Come on. He said, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Come on. He'll keep you. He will comfort you. He will lure you away from that. He'll give you a way out. That you don't have to go back into that thing. He will take that thing away from you. That drug addiction. Whatever it is. That, that sex problem you have. He will help you. He will sustain you. He will what? Keep you. He'll give you a way out. If, if you need a wife, he will give you a wife. If you need a husband, he will give you that husband. But if we will trust in him and be patient and wait on God, that's your faith. Then knowing that I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to wait on you. You know what I need before I even ask. You see all things. You know all things. God sitting and see everything. 
He knows. He created everything. The heavens and the earth is mine. And the fullness thereof belongs to me. And they, come on. Even Satan, he created all of this. But Satan became evil, and he became the evil one. So continue to realize God deliver us from this evil. Come on. Deliver us from this evil. Because what you got to realize, whatever the devil is trying to tempt you, lead us not into this temptation, God. But help us. Deliver us from this thing that's trying to tempt me, to, to come against me, trying to manipulate me. Come on. Say to you something that you love or close to you. Come on. To just to get you where well, you did what he told Jesus when Jesus was hungry. He said, well, you, you hungry, I'm just paraphrasing, if you hungry, you 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 so powerful, you, you know how folks say, well, you so in God, why this ain't, why this not happening for you? See, I'm not lured by what you, what man thinks. That's what Jesus was saying. You, you don't tempt the Lord thy God. Come on. And God said, this is what Jesus said. He said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What he said, I'm not, I, I'm hungry, but I know that I'm going to live and stand and obey my father. See, what Satan come to do, that means he'll bow down to what Satan say. See, we have the enemy come and say, well, if you do this here, you you need this here, so you'll go do that there to get it. Yeah, at least you, you will have it paid for. At least you will what? You you know, you you got you got more than you got more than what you had when you was when you was uh, out there in the world. See, tempting you to go back. Telling you, you God ain't there for you, but it's all no. It's your faith, and say to no, faith pleases God. So if He can tempt you, look at you, look at you, 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 this, this old, and you ain't got this in this. Hey, God don't have God is time. Come on, you in Christ. I'm looking to live a long life, according to God. When he said in my time, you continue. Trust God. Come on. You continue to believe God. Not what is common to man to see. What, what they you see. Man always want to see something. But it, I keep the faith. You keep the faith. And keep trusting God. He will what? He said he will make you a way for you. Come on. He will make a way. You keep the faith. Keep trusting in God no matter what you're going through. You can overcome. Through Jesus Christ, you can overcome. Just keep the faith. God will not leave you, not forsake. He said what? Yeah, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't fear the evil. Don't fear what the evil one trying to do to you. Because I'm with you all the way. Sometimes it may feel like God ain't, is not there. Come on. But he's there. He's there. And because he's faithful to what he said he would do. Preserve you going out and preserve you coming. He said he'll preserve you. I will preserve you. The Lord will preserve you from all evil. That means he will help you any time the devil trying to get you, to tempt you, manipulate you, to do his way. Thank you. Keep the faith. Keep trusting in God and knowing that God is with you. And he said, he said it in his word. I'm with you. Come on. My rod and myself will comfort you. Come on, my spirit will be there to give you peace in the midst of your storm. I will send my angels out. 
as you speak my word, because they hearken to the voice of my word. And I will lift you up out of that state. If you're broken today, if you've been hurt, God, call upon the name of the Lord. Because Satan want to take that hurt and that pain and cause you to try to kill your joy, steal your peace. Come on. You call on the name of the Lord, get in his word and see what his word say about me being saved. They're the only thing, whatever, I do whatever going on. I say, Lord, what's going on? Give me a word for this. And once he give me a word for that, this is the way I want to be so close with him. When I feel like something's not right, the Holy Spirit let me know something's going on. You know how you shake a person, wake up. Because I feel him in my spirit. And I go before the throne, Lord, whatever it is. Come on, even if it's me messing up, forgive me and help me and correct me. And help me to stay on this path. Lead me not into temptation, Lord. Deliver me from this evil that around. Come on. No matter what valley you're going through, the shadows of darkness was coming in your way no god is with you and he protected you come on he said i'm protecting you i'm shielding you my rod we are sheep and he got the rod what keeping you in the path we might have to go through some valley but in those valleys god will keep you come on he will comfort you even in the midst of your valley. Don't fear what's going to happen, what somebody say they can do unto you. Because what can man do unto you when you're on the Lord's side? Come on. Don't put your confidence in this world, being the prince of this world, but put your trust in the Lord. Don't put your confidence in man, but put your comfort, put your trust in the Lord. To know what God's word say. Don't allow the enemy to tempt you and say, if you don't do this, you won't have this. Look what we got. And we ain't living like they is. They, that's, that's the word. See, you got to realize God going to bless you. And when he bless you, he got a time. But he wants you to put the trust. He need to see your faith. Is there and anchored in the Lord? Glory be to God. Let's go to Psalm 91 and let's start at the ninth verse. It said, Because thou hast made the Lord, come on, when you make the Lord, which is your reference, you know He's your reference, He's your protector, He's your fortune. Come on, even the Most High, your inhabitant. You inhabit him with his, with the praise. And you know that I'm going to praise God. And when you, now God say, when you do this, you make me. Come on. That means praise him with all your heart. When you make him the Lord of your life. When you make him your reference. That means he is your protector. And you realize. He is your comfort. He will preserve you. Come on. He said, there shall no evil. Come on. No evil befall thee. That means come around you. Neither shall any pledge. Come on. Pledge what's going on. Corona, whatever it may be. Aid or whatever. These are pledge. It say, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For the for he shall give his angels. Come on. I give them charge. He will give them charge over thee, over you, over me. When I make him my inhabitant, when I make it all about Jesus Christ, when I make it all about my Lord. Come on. 
when I trust in him. That's how you do it. You know that he's your protector. When you realize that and begin to stand on that, this is what God being so faithful in what his word says. I give my angels charge to, you, to keep you. Come on. And keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall what? Bear thee up in their own, in their hand. Come on. They will coat you, preserve you. Lest thou dash thy feet against the stone. They will keep you. They will preserve you. He said, they will keep you in all your ways. That means everything you're doing, they will keep you. God gave them choice to do so. Glory be to God. He gave them choice. So he's giving them charge, come on, to keep up in all your ways. Don't be lured by the tempting of the other enemy. The evil one is Satan. He wants to come and entice you away from faith and trust in the Lord with all your heart. What he said, lean not to your own understanding of how to live for this life. Your life is in Christ. Once you come to Jesus Christ, your life is not yours anymore. You surrender and gave it to the Lord. Now he lived in this life. Allow him to live it through you. Your job is to trust. Trust him. Yeah, though you walk through a valley, through the, the shadows of death, no matter what you're going through, no matter what the devil said. Come on. If God didn't tell you your time up, don't give up. If you got to say, I will live a long life because God said so. Come on. He said you would. He will give you live a long life if you put your total trust in him. He the same God back there with Abraham. He the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. If he did it for Abraham, he did it for all those prophets, all those ones in the in the Bible day back then. He the same God. The Bible still being fulfilled. He would do those same things for us. But it's our trust. He made a way out for us. And that way is Jesus Christ. He already made us a way of escape from the evil one. Don't go back. Know your way. And know that he done already made me a way of escape. And that was through Jesus Christ. That I don't have to be enticed about, by the temple. Because only the evil one is trying to do is to get you away from trusting in the Lord. If he knows that faith pleases God, if he knows that you are anchored in the Lord and trusting in every word he say, then see, he knows that. But if he can tempt you to get away from that and go to thinking negative and begin to say, oh, this here, this does not work. No, it's not God not working because he said he's faithful. It's you not working. And that means your faith is not working. Faith means trusting. You, you got confidence that God will do just what he said. And I will say what God said because I know he said his word would not go back void. He will preserve me going out. He will preserve me coming in wherever I go. He will keep me. He will shield me. He will preserve evil. Come on. All evil. He didn't say so. He said, I'll preserve you from all evil. Glory be to God. So let's remember that constantly when the tempter come, the evil one come, the temper away. From God's word and what he have said about us. Whatever God said. If he said I'm your shepherd and you don't have to want. Baby believe it. 
He will supply uh, your need according to his riches, not according to what you want. See, we are love of our eyes say, I want this, I want plenty, because God already know you wanted to try to outdo the job. Or to say, I got it better than the next person. If you got that kind of attitude, that's not the attitude where God is looking for. Come on. When he bless you, be a blessing to someone else. He don't just bless you to be all to yourself. Bless someone else. Not all them trying to cause them to, to, to they got to do something for me just, just for me to give them. That's that's not giving freely giving. That's that's grudgingly. That's not cheerfully. If I give you and God spoke to me to give, then I'm giving and forget about it. Because it's out of my hand because I did what God said. Don't try to get me to manipulate me to give me to manipulate. Satan does that to manipulate you to do it his way. When you're fighting God. Glory be to God. But we thank God for his word. And I pray that everyone stand on this, take this word and go and start it. Deliver us from evil. And we know the evil one is saved. Glory be to God. We always like to give an imitation to those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So today is the day to say yes to Jesus. Yes, Lord, I need you in my life. Preserve me and keep me. And he will come in. All you got to say, Lord, I surrender this myself from this. And deliver me. You can tell him that. Right now. Right where you, right where you at. You can say, Lord, deliver me from this evil. And he will what? Do so. He will do just. He say, I'm faithful. He is faithful for giving you a way of escape out of this. Glory be to God. So we just thank God for this word and we just pray that everyone get it and take it and, you know, and apply it. Apply it in your life. Glory be to God. I love you. And this is Minister Joanne Harris. This is Word Faith Ministry. And we know that God loves you more. Glory be to God.